Well, well, welcome everybody. It is Andrew here from IDB. iOS 11.2 has just been released in beta 3. We have seen that iOS 11.2 brought with it the first implementation of the Apple Pay cash card, as well as the Apple Pay messages app to send and receive money between friends. So the third beta doesn't bring any new changes as far as Apple Pay goes. It still does not contain iMessage in the cloud, nor AirPlay 2, but we did see a few other small tweaks. The previous beta also brought with it new iPhone 10 exclusive wallpapers that we also checked out in the past. But the biggest changes here, and big is put with quotes around it, is the small indicator here in the top right hand corner on the iPhone 10 to notify you that that is where you can access Control Center. But it is only available here on the lock screen. Once you unlock your phone, that indicator goes away. We had seen this in some promos from Apple, but this is the first time we've discovered it in an actual iOS version. We also saw new explainer images and cards for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth inside a control center because they do act differently here in iOS 11. Basically, when you turn off Wi-Fi, it doesn't turn it off. It just simply disconnects your current and other local networks, but it's still available for handoff and personal hotspot and airdrop. I honestly prefer this implementation because it allows you to disconnect from the network, which is generally what you're trying to do, but you can still use it for all those great other features like airdrop and handoff and everything else that you need Wi-Fi for. Usually when I toggle Wi-Fi off, it's when they're asking me to put in a password on a, a free local network or something's just not working right. Bluetooth also has a very similar functionality, letting you know that it'll still work for Apple Watch, Apple Pencil, Personal Hotspot, and Handoff, but it'll disconnect other accessories that are currently connected, at least until tomorrow when they will all regain their functionality once more, or until you toggle the switch back on. Again, I prefer this because usually something's not working right or I just need to disconnect from something, but you still want to use your Apple Watch and other things like that. Seems a little bit odd that the Apple Pencil is noted here on the iPhone 10 and on the iPhone because you really can't connect an Apple Pencil to them. That seems more of an iPad exclusive thing, but it is noted nonetheless. We also ran Geekbench tests like we normally do for betas come out just to see how performance is adjusting from beta to beta. It's obviously far too early to tell how things like battery life are impacted in this beta, but after running a quick Geekbench test, we did see that performance has dropped down just a little bit. Compared to previous Geekbench tests we ran, this is coming in at almost 5800. That is just about 150 so points below on that multi-score test compared to what we got before, which was around 5,900. So a little bit lower there as far as the multi-core score. Nothing drastic, but just those improvement is a little, little iffy here since we are still currently on the beta. Make sure you check out all of our other videos on the updates to iOS, including what we saw in previous betas, as well as our first look hands-on exclusive with Apple Pay and Messages, the Apple Pay cash card, how it works, how you transfer money, and just everything about it. We'll find links for those throughout this video, as well as in the description. Let us know if there's anything else that we missed in the comments. And until next time, this is Andrew for IDB.